Hello everyone. Uh, in this learning objective, we explain how an exchange traded fund is created and discuss both the benefits and detriments of investing in ETF. ETF can be considered to be akin to an open-ended passive managed fund. This is because they invest in a basket of securities that tend to hold passively across time and this basket of securities tend to trap the performance of some pre-specified index such as the market index. They are open-ended because the number of units may increase or decrease in response to supply and demand. However, the exchange traded fund deliver and manage funds in a way they are constructed and because they are traded on an exchange in much the same way as a share, exchange traded funds have grown tremendously uh, across time and then now they now cover a wide range of assets including equities debt securities currencies and commodities in terms of growth of exchange traded funds what's interesting to note that in terms of financial markets they are relatively new phenomena the first ETF was actually introduced in the United States in 1993, so it was only 25 years back. And it was an ETF on Standard and Poor's uh, 500 index, which is known as a SPIDER, Standard and Poor Depository Receipts. What's interesting to note is that this SPIDER ETF is still traded in the New York Stock Exchange today. And it's actually the highest dollar value of any security that's traded on the U.S. market. There are more spider ETFs traded on the U.S. stock market on a given day than any uh, amount of stock traded for any other large companies in the Australian market. So this really shows the economic significance of exchange traded funds. The spider being just uh, one example of a large number of ETFs that exist worldwide. There's been a huge growth in ETFs. Current market capitalization is about $2 trillion worldwide and about half of the total market capitalization is in the US. ETFs are so large that they comprise about one-tenth of the market capitalization of mutual funds, which is phenomenal given that they basically didn't exist 20 years back. ETFs represent about uh, a third of all trading on U.S. exchanges. Um, so ETFs not only exist in the U.S. market, they do exist in the Australian market also. Uh, in Australian market, there are about 60 exchange-traded funds with a market capitalization about, of about $5 billion. Uh, so they're also very large in the context of Australian market as well. So if we look at uh, the ETFs under management, which is the blue line and the number of ETFs, we can see uh, a phenomenal growth over time from 2000 to 2010. There are a range of exchange traded funds that are available on the Australian Securities Exchange. Well, uh, there are exchange traded funds available in equity market and bond market, both ASX 200 index and the Russell Australian government bonds both have ETFs over there. We also have ETFs on various international stock markets, commodities and currencies. ETFs provide a very effective way for investors to get exposure to a range of different asset classes without some of the problems associated with investing in those asset classes such as uh, issues around liquidity and so forth. So with respect to exchange traded funds, it's important to note that the way they are constructed, basically some sort of a sponsor will invest in a basket of assets. Those assets will be pulled together and then they will be securitized by a broker. So securitized means a number of units will be created over the portfolio and they will be sold to investors. But the key feature is that the basket of assets, the portfolio that we are talking about is listed with the stock market in the same way a farm is listed on stock market and each of the shares in the ETF is traded in the stock market like shares of a company are being traded. Because of the feature of ETFs being listed, we get the key benefit of uh, ETF fund is their liquidity. 
So unlike a managed fund or a mutual fund where if you want to redeem units, you have to do it at the net asset value at the end of every day, the nature of ETF are such that they are traded on the stock market and the high volume of trading means that they can be bought and sold almost instantaneously. A further benefit is the fact that ETFs are quite passive, uh, hence incur very low management fee. Therefore, the fees of ETFs are significantly lower than those we see for other managed funds. ETFs are also able to track benchmarks very closely, so uh, they have low tracking error. This is beneficial because it enables investors to get exposure to particular indices that they are interested in without exposure to unsystematic risk factors. ETFs are also transparent. They clearly disclose the holdings and generally the holdings will be related to the particular index that they are trying to track and there can also be tax certain benefits. Now one final point to note and that's important about ETF is because they are traded on the market just like a normal stock, they can be invested in much the same way as a stock can be invested. So that means that ETFs can be sold short. If an investor wants to short exposure to an entire market, they can do so by shorting an exchange traded fund. ETFs can also be bought and sold on margin. So uh, you can get leverage benefits by using margin like we have seen for stocks previously. Short sell and margin trading facilities are typically not available for other managed fund shares, for example, mutual funds. However, like any other investment, there are some negatives that need to be considered. First of all, because exchange traded funds do trade on a market, there are some additional hidden costs that need to be considered. The most prominent of those are the transaction costs. There are costs associated with beta spreads and potentially price impact. Although the price impact may not be a significant one because of the huge volume of ETFs traded every day. There might also be a, uh, additional internal uh, transaction costs that are applicable. Another potential negative for exchange traded fund is that dividends are not automatically reinvested, which is the case of the mutual funds. So depending on an investor's tax situation or depending on their preference for regular cash flows, uh, this can be a detriment for ETFs. Finally, some people who believe that markets are not perfectly efficient might argue that a further problem with an ETF is the fact that it trades on a market like a stock. Therefore, its value would be determined not only by the fundamental value of underlying portfolio, but also by investors' belief and factors that might affect supply and demand. This potentially could add additional layer of risk above the risk of the underlying portfolio. That's the hold. I have skipped this counterparty risk. Now, of one final point is it's important to consider some of the differences between exchange traded funds and mutual funds or managed funds. First of all, because ETFs are traded on an exchange, they're subject to trade commission like a stock. So brokerage fees, based also spread, etc., are going to be applicable here. For managed funds, although the so different fees will be applicable, but because managed funds do not trade in the same way, they don't have this particular cost in the same manner. Secondly, a big difference, and this is really important difference for retail investors, is that managed funds usually require a large initial investment, whereas uh, with an exchange traded funds, you could just buy a single share of the ETF and the single share would just like uh, a single stock in the market. So smaller lots can be purchased by retail investors and hence they are accessible to a great uh, range of market participants. Uh, one last point is mutual funds are sold by fund company, whereby in the case of ETFs, once they're created, trades take place in the secondary market, so they are sold by participants within the market, which is another key difference between the two. So this is the end of our discussion on learning objective three.
Thank you.